Okay, so we are starting our second unit. Um, and honestly, this to me is the most important part of pre-calc. Okay, we are going to spend four straight chapters on trig. So that your next four exams will all be trig. So we failed trigonometry, we failed class, pretty much. Yes. Okay. So this first chapter, this first chapter is going to be more review of basic tricks. So we're going to talk about Sokotoa. We're going to talk about right triangle trick. Okay, back to what you did in geometry. All right. Uh, the second chapter is graphing trick. This is probably going to be new, but we'll talk about how to do that. Uh, so we'll do that. The third chapter is trig identities and equations. We're going to take trig things with the unit circle, and we're going to solve those. And then the last chapter is on vectors and parametric equations. So um, that one to me is probably the least important of all of them, and uh, but that's kind of where we're at. So we're starting, like I said, with basic trick. And before we can even start with that, we're going to start very, very basic today. So um, all right. We're going to start by reviewing how to find angles or how to work with angles and degree measures. Okay. So we have angles and degree measures. Okay. So to start, we're going to talk about angles. What constitutes an angle? So an angle. An angle has three definitive parts. And if you want to count, technically it has four. Okay? So, we'll start with number two here. Where the two rays of an angle meet, that is what we call a vertex. Okay? And technically these are rays. Okay? <coughs> Then we have this side is called the terminal side, and this side is called the initial side. And again, how you determine that all depends on where the angle starts and stops. If it's a positive measure, if it's a negative measure, etc. And then what is theta here? What is that? The degree. That's the actual degree measure. Okay? So, with angles, okay, with angles, we have positive and negative. It's all based on a circle. A circle is how many degrees? 360. 360. Okay? Just quickly to review, if an angle 
is between zero. If it's between zero and ninety, what type of angle is it? A Q. A Q. If it equals ninety, it's a right angle. If the angle is between 90 and 180. It's a twos. If the angle is 180 degrees, what do we call that? A line. That is a line. Or it's also called a straight angle. Okay? Anything bigger than 180? Is a portion of a circle. It's called a sector, technically, but excuse me, we don't need to know that. Great. Okay. Any questions on that so far? No. Okay. When? When we're measuring angles, if it opens counterclockwise, if an angle opens counterclockwise, so from its initial side to its terminal side, if that is measured counterclockwise, that is a positive angle. Okay? If the measure is clockwise, we consider that a negative angle. And that all comes back two our four quadrants and assuming our initial side is on the x-axis. So this here would be a positive or a negative angle? Negative. Counterclockwise. Positive. That would be a positive angle because this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. It's measured counterclockwise, so theta here is positive. Okay? Now, if I have an angle like that, now this is a negative angle. Now, back to the point that somebody said, well, that's negative. Could I measure this angle like that? Yeah, you can. Now that, that red angle is negative there. Because I started at zero and I went clockwise. It all depends where the little arc is in the angle. Is it outside the angle? So like here, if I went this way, this would be a positive angle. It all depends where the initial and terminal sides are and how we are showing the drawing. Am I showing it clockwise or counterclockwise? <coughs> Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So, okay. Any questions on that? What is the most common? How do we measure angles? What do we call that? What's our unit of measurement? Degrees. Okay. I'm just writing the same words over and over again. All right. So the degree is our most basic unit of measurement. You may be thinking, all right, we've been doing this since like fifth, sixth grade where they gave us protractors and we measured, right? Yeah. But technically, the concept of the degree comes back, goes all the way back to the Babylonian days, okay? Their number system was based on 60, where ours is based on 10, which is where one hour comes from. 
one hour all the way around a circle, right? Technically, that's why clock is round. It's back to the Babylonian concept of 60. They took everything in groups of 60, whereas we take everything in groups of 10. Now, so what they did is they took 1 60th of a circle, and they called that a degree. And that is how we measure degrees to this day. It all comes back to that concept of, so if you take a clock and you take each one of those second marks on the clock, that little sliver is technically a degree of that circle. Okay? But that's where the concept comes back to. But you may not know, degrees can also be broken down. You see this most with longitude and latitude. Okay? When you measure something in longitude and latitude, it's not always just 48 degrees north. There's partial degrees, which within that, there's also minutes, which there's 60 of those. And within that, there's also seconds, which again, there's 60 of those. Okay? And we label minutes. So how we write minutes, it's one with a tick mark after that, that's one minute. And if it's seconds, it's two tick marks. Okay? So minutes we label. So if we label this, it's like 36 degrees. Five minutes, 16 seconds. That would be how we would mathematically write that. So like it's 36 degrees north, 36 degrees, five minutes, 16 seconds north. Okay. Questions so far? So as we said, this where is this most used? Longitude and latitude. Okay? When we're talking about like Osage, it has a specific longitude and latitude value. And I can guarantee you it's not exactly on a specific longitude and latitude value. It's going to have some partial degree. So what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about, okay, so if I have, like I said, 36 minutes, 36 degrees, 5 minutes, and 16 seconds, how do I convert that to a degree measure that's used in longitude and latitude and vice versa? So we're actually going to do that here with a couple example problems. Okay? So... Here's the example we're going to look at. Okay, the sextant is an optical instrument invented around 1730. It's used to measure the angular elevation of stars. An angular elevation of stars so that a navigator can determine a ship's current latitude. Suppose a navigator determines a ship in the Pacific Ocean to be located at north latitude 15.735 degrees. How can this be written in degrees, minutes, and seconds? So, we're told 15, 15.735 degrees north. We want to convert this to degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay? So, if I want to convert this to degrees, minutes, and seconds, what part of this up here is going to be my degrees? The 15. So 15.735 is equal to 15 degrees. Plus, now we got to figure out, okay, how can I convert that to minutes and seconds? Well, 0.735, my decimal, and what we say, how many minutes were in a degree? 60. So times 60 minutes. So if we do that, 
No, that's just a label. Yeah, what did you do with my calculator? Left over a second. Oh, I put it up there. Oh. I forgot I put it on your desk. That's fine. I'll go grab it, Kyle. All right, so I got 0.735 times 60. So this becomes 15 degrees plus 44.1 minutes. But again, when I wrote minutes on that previous slide, did I have partial minutes or was that seconds? Seconds. So now this becomes 15 degrees plus 44 minutes plus 0.1 times 60 seconds. So I take 0.1 times 60 and that sits. So 15 degrees. 44 minutes and 6 seconds. That's my answer. So if I want to convert. You go, you go until you get it down. Yep. So if you want to convert a longitudinal or a latitudinal value to degrees, minutes, and seconds, you just break it up into chunks. The whole number becomes... The unit you're working with, and then you just take the decimal part and multiply it by 60 until you get rid of the decimal. Now, I'm not going to ask you to go lower than seconds. Like that's all the lower you're going to have to go is seconds. Okay. So what? I don't. I'm not sure. Milliseconds. Milliseconds. Decimal seconds. I don't know. Milliseconds. Right? Say what? Milliseconds is broke up into 100 though. That's where, yeah, instead of 60. That's why we just stop at seconds. All right, any questions on what we just did there? Does that make sense? All right, now let's work backwards. So now I'm going to give you a problem broken down, and I want to convert it back into large, longitudinal and latitudinal. So, we've got 39 degrees, 5 minutes and 34 seconds, and we want to round it to the nearest thousand. <clears throat> to the nearest thousand. So, we know we have 39 degrees, so we just need to work with the... Five minutes, 34 seconds. So where do we think we should start? We're going to take five minutes, which is one degree over 60, 60 minutes. So we're going to divide it by 60. Whoa. Oh, you just have to multiply it into a mix. So... I'm doing the exact same thing we did last time, but in reverse. So instead of multiplying by 60, I'm going to divide by 60. Now, I'm going to take 34 seconds. What makes this one tricky is we have to think, when I found seconds before, I technically multiplied it to minutes first, then I multiplied it to seconds. So I multiplied by 60 twice, which is... 3,600. 60 times 60. 6 times 6 is 36. Add the two zeros. So 1 degree is 3,600 seconds. Or think, divide by 60 twice. Because that's really what that is. Now if we plug that into our calculator, we're going to get that this can be written as 39.093 degrees. And how did I get 093? 5 divided by 60 plus 34 divided by 3600. And I rounded it to the third decimal place, which is 1,000. That's it. Okay. 
Any questions so far? All right, so that's the first big section of this lesson. All right, next thing we need to talk about is quadrant angles. So assuming our initial side is here at zero, okay? How many right angles are there in this picture? Four. Four which is why we call these quadrants. Quad means four, so that's saying quadrants are four 90 degree angles put together. So as we said, one four rotation all the way around, where a circle is how many degrees? 360 degrees. We're breaking that up into four even chunks. So our quadrant values are 90 degrees, 180 degrees and 270 degrees. So you have four quadrants. Quadrant one is between zero and 90. Quadrant two, 90 to 180. Quadrant three, 180 to 270. And quadrant four, 270 to 360. Okay, so if I say to go a half rotation around the circle, how many degrees is a half rotation? 180. 180, it's half a circle, right? Yeah. What if I say to go three-fourths a rotation? Okay, one-fourth a rotation. Okay. So what if I said 5.5 rotations clockwise? 5.5 rotations clockwise. And I want to know how many degrees is that? So first off, we have to decide. Is it a positive angle or a negative angle? Negative. It's negative because clockwise. <coughs> and then, five, four rotations. How do I find that value? 360 times five plus a half rotation is 180. So, 360 times five. 1,800 plus 180 is one, negative 1,980 degrees. Now, Keaton just said, well, can I just take 360 times 5.5? <coughs> yes. You can. You can just multiply by 360. Technically, if you wanted to, you could do it with one calculation, take negative 360, because it's clockwise, times 5.5, and you get negative 19.8. The big key to whether it's positive or negative is that last word. So then... Sometimes they're not quite as nice. What if I say 3.3 rotations counterclockwise? How do I find that value? 3.3 rotations counterclockwise. So counterclockwise tells us is it positive or negative? 110. Positive. No, 120. And I can just take 3.3 times. And if you do that, you get 1,188 degrees. Make sense? Okay. 
So far, so good? Yeah. All right. We have two quick concepts left, and we'll be done. There you go. First one. Co-terminal angles. Co-terminal angles. Co-terminal angles are angles that have the same terminal side, which means they stop at the same point. They stop at the same point. So just to give you an example, this is 45 degrees. This is 405 degrees. These are co-terminal angles. They start and end at the same place, but they're different angles. How are they different? One goes all the way around and stops at the same point where one just stops. So what is a coterminal angle, or how do I find a coterminal angle? You add or subtract 360 degrees or a power of 360. So what we say is 360N, where N is a number of full rotations. So, if on a quiz I was to ask you to find coterminal angles, and I said 45 degrees, you could write 405. You could also write negative 315. You could also write 765. So, what am I saying? You're just adding or subtracting 360 degrees a certain amount of times. So 45 plus 360 is 405. They're the exact same point on the, the angle looks the same. One's just gone all the way around and stopped at the same point. If I said 765, that's again, gone around two full times and stopped at that same 45 degree mark. That's just like measuring minutes versus hours. Okay? If we didn't have the hour hand to tell us where it's at, we don't know the difference between 1215 and 315. If all we had was a minute hand. It's the same concept with coterminal angles. Each hour is one full rotation. So without the hour hand, we don't know how many hours you've been sitting in the same spot. All you know is that it's at 15, right? It's the same concept with coterminal angles. The ending point's always the same. It's just a matter of how many full rotations before it got to that ending point, either positive or negative, okay? So, to give you an example.
Find two coterminal angles of 225 degrees. Find two coterminal angles of 225 degrees. So, again, coterminal means same starting point, same ending point. So, how do I find two coterminal angles? You add 360 to it and subtract 360 from it. So, 585 degrees is a coterminal angle and negative 135 is a coterminal angle. Coterminal just means rotations. Okay? All right. We can also use this in reverse. is equal to 775 degrees, and if theta is the universal symbol used to measure angles. So if theta equals 775, find a coterminal angle between 0 and 360. So what this is saying, we have a really big angle, 775 degrees. We want to know what is an angle that would fit in one rotation that it has the same starting point and ending point. So how do I find coterminals? Again, we said you either add or subtract 360 degrees. So is 775 bigger or smaller than 360? Bigger. So to find, to get it, we need to make it smaller. So we're just gonna subtract 360 until it fits this range. So that's 415. So again, I got to subtract 360. And I get that that is 55 degrees. So the angle that fits, or that is coterminal to 775, is 55 degrees. So the 775 degree angle and the 55 degree angle start and stop at the same point. One's just going around the circle two times before it stops. Okay. We could do the same thing with negatives. So I could say theta equals negative 1297. And I want to find a coterminal angle. Negative 1297. So now you just keep adding 360. And I'm going to have to add 360 four times. So you add 360 four times. And if I do that, I do that, I get 143. So coterminal angle for negative 1297 is 143. All right. That's enough for today. To make it positive, I need it between 0 and 360. All right. So here's practice for you for tomorrow. Do you need to do this by tomorrow? Uh, I'm only going to give you a few problems, so yeah, I'd like to. So, here's what I want. Page 280, 281. I want you to do...
problems. Five. Five through eight. And then 12 and 13. Five through eight. 12 and 13. So if you have nothing to do during green time today, that would be a great time to do that. Um, otherwise, if you have other stuff you need to work on, work on that then.